Physical activity has immediate and protective benefits for your brain. Exercise actually changes the brain's anatomy, physiology, and function. Several studies found that people who are more physically fit have more gray matter in frontal regions of the brain linked to higher cognition. Things associated with a reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease include physical activity, leaving you with a brain more resilient to damage should it come. We all know that exercise is good for our health. Doing sports on a regular basis keeps us in shape, lowers the risk to develop diseases and promotes sleep. But scientists have also uncovered another, more unexpected benefit of exercising. It can change how our brain works. And with that, my name is Gemmons and today we'll see how exercise can create super brains. As always, let's rewind a bit, but this time a bit more than usual. The history of sports goes back thousands of years, but sports really took off with the dawn of ancient Greece. Sports was considered a fun activity, but philosophers soon made a connection between working out and a healthy mind. Especially Aristotle and Plato thought that there might be a connection between exercise and intelligence. And fun fact, Plato's name really can be translated as broad, which might refer to his broad shoulders as he was a wrestler. So Plato probably didn't look like this, but more like this. As time passed on, new civilizations formed and philosophers argued over and over again that exercise might be important for a healthy mind. Over the centuries, important personalities such as Martin Luther, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Thomas Jefferson all advocated sports as a way to train the mind. But still for regular people, sports was especially one thing fun. And so more and more types of sports were being developed. In the 16th century there was cricket and baseball and basketball followed in the 19th century. While all these sports formed, scientists formulated what we now call the scientific theory and soon discovered that exercise has multiple benefits on our health. Especially when countries became industrialized and people started to take in too many calories, scientists found an interesting trend. Heart disease, type 2 diabetes and different forms of cancer can all be prevented through exercising. It was only at the end of the 20th century though that scientists finally confirmed what philosophers had speculated over centuries. Physical exercise also impacts brain health. And these effects are astonishing and found for all stages of life. Children who are physically active have a higher chance to score higher in creativity, concentration, mass, verbal and IQ tests. Scientists also scanned the brains of children and found that the hippocampus, a brain area which is important for memory, is enlarged in children who regularly exercise. Furthermore, the brains of children who exercise also heavily use a specific type of memory called relational memory. Relational memory is based on associations, meaning that for example you do not only remember a face, but also a name and all kinds of other different relevant information. There was also found that children who are physically active have larger basal ganglia. And this area is important for maintaining attention. The combination of a large hippocampus and basal ganglia combined with cultivating specific forms of memory seem to explain why exercise leads to better scores in children. You might now take a look in the mirror and realize, wait, I'm not a child anymore. Well, then let me assure you, exercise still can benefit you. Please put a shirt on, Plato. No? We do not only benefit from exercise during our childhood, but throughout our whole lives. A big study conducted in Sweden tried to see how fitness correlates with intelligence. They collected data from 1 million young adults who recently joined the military. Yeah, it was a big study. It was found that physical fitness is associated with higher scores in general and logical and verbal intelligence. This study also tracked the progress of these individuals over the years and they found that people who tend to be more fit also have a better career. But even if you do not look like our friend Plato, there is still something you can do. Adults who have started exercising show improvements in their short-term memory and spatial memory after roughly 1.5 to 3 months. Cycling also has shown to improve verbal learning in adults. In this type of learning, people have to make associations between words. And then exercise also helps to lower the risk to develop any form of dementia. But even if we get old, it's not only about preventing disease. Elderly adults who work out also have a great activity in the frontal and parietal cortices. These areas are important for attention and conflict resolution and cultivating them helps to keep us sharp as we get old. So as you can see, many, many, many studies point towards the same direction. Exercise helps our brain. But how does this work? How does exercise change the activity of our brains? This will blow your mind. <laughs> you see what I did there.
As we have seen, there are many positive effects of exercise on our health throughout our lives. So how does this work? In order to find out, we need to understand how our bodies and our brains react to exercising. Every time we work out, brain cells have to send feedback to the used muscles. At the same time, our heart rate increases and blood circulates quicker through the body. As a consequence, oxygen is consumed faster. To avoid a lack of oxygen, brain cells release a molecule called VEGF, which helps to grow new blood vessels in the brain. This then provides different brain areas with more oxygen and that helps the overall function of the brain. Brain cells then also release neurotrophins. Neurotrophins are molecules which support the survival of brain cells. Both the formation of new blood vessels and neurotrophins have been linked to some of the benefits we observe when we work out. But these are not the only positive effects we observe. Exercise has been shown to help the creation of brain cells in the hippocampus. As said earlier, the hippocampus is a brain region which is important to store memory. Since new brain cells in this region are grown when we work out, they might improve the memory of people who work out regularly. More importantly though, exercise has been shown to strengthen the connections between existing brain cells. This phenomenon is called neuroplasticity and we've already covered it in the past. Neuroplasticity means that our brain cells form new brain connections. Every time neurons are active together, their connections become stronger and over time brain regions are transformed. One of the reasons why exercise helps neuroplasticity is, again, the release of neurotrophic factors. This means that exercise helps us to learn things more easily by provoking neuroplasticity. And these are the reasons why people who regularly work out also score better in different forms of intelligence tests. But there is another effect of exercise which is enormously important. Exercise improves our mental health. You might know the feeling, but sometimes when you've worked out, you just feel good. It feels like you've accomplished something great and now you can rest. If that's the case, what you might feel is your brain responding to the exercise. When we work out, the neurotransmitter serotonin is released, which signals that we have done something good. And this mechanism is now being used to treat depression. Take the case of BA. BA is a 26-year-old woman who has suffered from psychological disorders since her teenage years. She especially suffered from self-harm. She often had up to two self-injury episodes per week. In a small study, scientists tried to find out whether physical exercise can help to improve her disorder. They provided her with a workout video and some instructions. BA decided to implement a workout routine and after a while she started to feel better. She reported to feel better about herself and her self-injury episodes completely stopped. She continued her exercises even after the study concluded. The benefits of exercising on our brains are also observed in larger groups. In a quite famous study, 202 patients with major depressive disorder were divided into three groups. One group received standard antidepressants and a second group a placebo. The third group underwent aerobic training for 16 weeks. At the end of the study, all patients had a final discussion with a psychologist and it was found that the number of patients who recovered from the depression was as high in the exercise group as in the antidepressant group. Of course, this does not mean that exercise is the ultimate treatment for all forms of depression. No, depression cases are very unique. But some scientists are now calling for supervised exercising as an addition to other forms of treatment and this might make a huge difference. So let's see where it goes. Only 50% of children, 8% of teenagers and 5% of adults are exercising the recommended amounts. 82 million US citizens and 1.4 billion people worldwide do not exercise at all. But this is something that should change. Exercise is important not only to avoid heart disease or type 2 diabetes, but also to elevate the functionality of our brains. So let's say you're now pumped and you want to start working out what is actually recommended to do. It took me actually quite long now to combine all the different literature I found and if your sports is not now on this list, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's all about having a training form, having some form of intensity training. So let's start. Diseases first, 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise per week is recommended. This helps to curb the risks of heart disease, dementia and other chronic diseases. Concerning brain health, 120 minutes of moderate exercise a week might be enough to get all the benefits we've seen in this video. But scientists have also found that even if you do less, it makes a difference in the long run. Scientists still debate what kind of sports might be the best, but in general, 
aerobic exercise is your friend. It is suggested that moderate aerobic exercise helps the memory, high intensity exercise information processing and longer exercises reduce anxiety the best. And under aerobic exercise we can simplify it and say everything which keeps now your heart pumping is, is good for you. So this might be swimming, jogging or even walking your dog if you, you know, walk fast. It is also recommended to have shorter but more frequent workout sessions. So in this case, for example, it might come in handy to just take the bike to work, right? So this is what I found in the literature. What I also want to emphasize though is that we shouldn't overdo it. Studies have found that people who daily exercise extensively have an increased risk of stroke compared to those who only work out twice or three times a week. Some people also advocate that American football or football might be bad for the brains of athletes. It is suggested that these sports can lead to repeated small concussions which then might lead to a higher risk to develop strokes and dementia later in life. In this case, however, I want to say that you have to take it with a grain of salt. Not all studies come to this conclusion and also this report has been amplified by media who want to say that, hey, athletes can suffer from dementia. So it's not as straightforward. We all know that exercise improves our health. Regularly working out decreases the risk of getting chronic diseases such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes or certain types of cancer. But exercise also improves our memory, attention and different forms of learning. Will working out make us the next Play-Doh? Well, probably not. But exercising and especially aerobic exercising supports the function of our brain, which doesn't only help us when we have to study for an exam, but also in our day-to-day -day lives. So yeah, it's time for you to close this video and to switch to one of your favorite fitness YouTubers. Wait, wait, wait. Before that, one second. Two questions passed down to you. How do you exercise? And have you noticed any improvement since you started exercising? Feel free to share your experiences in the comment section. I hope that you liked this video and if you're new here, you might consider subscribing and do all the other great YouTube stuff to feed the algorithm. Uh, if so, thank you very much. And with that, sign Sarah yours, Clemens. If you want to know how terrible social media actually is for our brain, you might like this video. If you want to know other ways for which we can cultivate our super brains, you might like this video.